Well, if you saw my last video, then you know that I recently sold my bull and four cows at auction. They were all getting up in age, and I believe they were negatively impacting my calving efficiency. So it was time to sell them. And now that I have some of that money in my pocket, it's time to start thinking about replacements. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to buy a replacement bull. Now, I like to use an Angus bull on my Brayford cows. The reason is that the resulting calves tend to come out darker colored and tend to fetch a higher price at auction. So I already know what kind of breed I want to get. And then it comes down to what actual bull should I buy? There's a lot that goes into that decision. And you know, you have to look at things like, was the bull a low birth weight bull, meaning that the calves it throws are gonna also be low birth weight so that they don't endanger the mama cows while they're giving birth. But then again, you wanna make sure they have a high weaning weight so that when the calves are weaned from the mamas, they are stocky and will fetch a higher price at auction. There's a whole host of other considerations that go into it. So what I'm gonna do right now is head down to a place here in Hallettsville that has a really good stock. They have been breeding Angus bulls for a long time. I believe it's since 1991. And I'm gonna meet up with Mark Yannick and this is a J-Bar Angus in Hallettsville. So I'm gonna to talk to Mark about his stock and also what kinds of things he looks for whenever he is raising bulls for sale. So I've got the trailer hooked up to the back of the truck and I'm getting ready to head out the door and go meet up with Mark. So let's go ahead and take a road trip. Now at the beginning of the video, I mentioned two factors that you wanna look for that is low birth rate of the bull and also a high weaning weight. Those factors fall under the heading of EPDs, which stands for expected progeny differences. I know that's a mouthful. Essentially, those are numbers that indicate the likelihood that a particular bull will either be higher or lower than the average bull in its breed and class for certain characteristics. And there's a whole host of characteristics, including, like I mentioned, calving ease, uh, calving weight, weaning weight, yearling weight. Uh, there's also things like marbling, uh, ribeye size, <laughs> uh, size of the scrotum, which is an indication of fertility. There's a whole host of things that fall under EPDs. And if you look at one of those EPD charts, it can look very daunting. Like, how do I interpret this? So essentially, when you see things on here that indicate that something is a positive, it means it is more likely for this particular bull to have that characteristic than the average bull of this breed in this class. So that is something that you want to take a look at and use that as a tool when you are going to look at bulls, in particular registered bulls, which I'm gonna to do today. Now, if you are raising calves for sale at auction, you're not raising calves for your own breeding program, then some of these factors may not be as important to you, but they are still important overall. For example, calving ease is a very important one because you wanna make sure that if you introduce a bull to your herd, let's say you were running uh, heifers that have not yet been bred, you wanna make sure that you have a high calving ease number so that you have less likelihood that your heifers are going to have to be assisted in giving birth whenever they do have that first calf. So for me, I have cows, which are animals that have already given birth at least once. And so I am not as concerned about calving ease, but at the same time, if I later introduce a heifer to my program, I do want to make sure that my bull can also service her and not have any problems. So overall, it's best to try and find a bull with a low birth weight and with good calving ease so that you don't have to uh, worry about your cows and heifers later on down the road. Armed with this information, I look forward to meeting up with Mark to find out more about his breeding operation and check out his Angus bulls. This is it.
How you doing? All right, how do you pronounce your last name, Mark? Yannock. Tell me a little bit about your program. Well, we have, we have a stock program. We sell cattle to people that want to use Angus bulls and you know promote the Angus genes. And uh, we sell a couple hundred bulls a year. Oh, wow. Uh, we have a sale here at the house. Uh, first Friday in December, we sell 100 bulls there. Then we sell private treaty bulls uh, to people like you uh, all year long. Okay. So uh, we have, I think, about 20 bulls now available. I know that, you know, the EPDs, it's the traits, the characteristics that, you know, are expected in a particular bull. How do you predict whether a bull would be above or below average? So first off, we uh, send all of our bird weights and weaning weights to American Angus, and then they process that within contemporary groups and generate an EPD from that. As far as the marbling and ribeye, we do ultrasounding and scan the animals, and then that's also sent to a uh, lab and it's processed. There's a new thing, a DNA testing that we're doing now. Uh, we just started that a year ago. It's supposed to be uh, up to five times more accurate than EPDs. Is that considered genomically enhanced EPDs? Yes. Awesome, okay. So, uh, you know, we're looking at the same traits that we're looking at uh, as far as EPDs on genomics, but it's kind of pushing it farther down the line as far as uh, predictability. Uh, generally, an EPD on a, a young animal is about 5% genomically enhanced. It can be up to 50%. It moves the accuracy up that much. Wow, that's significant. At this point, I asked Mark if he could give me a quick tour of his breeding operation and also explain their bull calf vaccination program. We do a trick test on some of the bulls that are herd bulls, and we never had trick, you know, show up. We have a few bulls that are not registrable. Uh, the new rule is now you have to trick test all of those. Okay. Uh, we've tested probably over the last five years, 100, 150 bulls and all negative. So okay. we're good with that. Then as far as vaccinations, at three to five months, we do a black leg, a Vib6, a deworming. And then when we wean them, we do a, do a booster like an eight-way black leg again, a Vib6 plus VL5. We do a couple other shots, of a foot guard shot and a mycoplasma shot. Here's where we we actually, you know, weigh the cattle and work the cattle is our hydraulic chute. A scale right here, an electronic scale. Bring them down right here and then, you know, just put them, put them in this uh, hydraulic chute. Nice. I got my, get my weaning heights. I got it labeled on here and just get my weaning heights off of there and, and uh, on a, on our yearling bulls, when we test them, we get a scrotal measurement and a weight, and then uh, this is where we also semen test the bulls. I was curious to know what percentage of their bulls are kept as breeders versus sold at auction, and also whether having low birth weight bulls is an important consideration in their breeding program. Okay, so probably when we started out in 91, we were probably at 10 to 20% at weaning time cut off and sell up to the barn. Uh, now, after rigorous uh, culling processes, uh, we're probably only at five or less percent. Wow. And uh, we try to use all low bird weight bulls, but from time to time we get some higher bird weight calves. And you know, if their birth EPD is uh, not acceptable for heifers, uh, we have quite a few breeders that use bulls for F1 Brangus or F1 Tiger Stripe cows. And they actually need a little more birth weight. Everybody's scared of the birth weight. And, and the Angus breed has ran so far down that, you know, they're in the negatives on this birth EPD and, you know, you get little jackrabbits out of it. And you can't <laughs> expect the growth from those calves. So, right. Uh, we stay around a one to two on birth weight and we calve all of our heifers, cows, they're all calving unassisted with, you know, not us right on top of them. You know, we try to have a calving season, so we're checking cattle every day, day and a half uh, on these places when we're calving but they're doing it on their own. And so most people are coming to me, I want the lightest bird weight bull you got. Well, you know, we, we don't just shoot for that real super extreme low birth weight because we feel like the growth then don't come along with it. Right. I also want to hear your thoughts on registered versus unregistered. I've always bought registered uh, okay. just because people recommended it to me. I noticed that you did have a couple of unregistered on your website. I may, they may have been sold already, but 
What is your thoughts on buying registered versus unregistered? There's less predictability of what it's actually gonna do, a non-registered bull, but Cavanese wise, you still wouldn't have a problem, especially on these F1 type cattle. The reason they come up non-registered, there was a sire we used way back when, 10, 15 years ago, Bonview New Design 1407, and he threw, threw a lot of white underneath, and they got some stipulations where the white can be, and so uh, that's one reason why maybe some of the mamas that we kept, uh, they didn't qualify and, and thought really good cows, so we just kept them in the registered program. Or I collect the records, my wife processes the records, and so therefore sometimes there's a clash of, you know, how come you didn't get this or why you didn't get this? And I don't have a big workforce, it's myself and my son help working and we're running about 300 Angus cows and sometimes you just can't get everything done as everyone knows that, but sometimes if it don't line up the parentage uh, or just whatever it is, uh, we just go commercial with the female or, or even with the bull. And commercial meaning unregistered. Yes, uh, unregistered pure Angus bull. And so therefore, three guys are grading these bulls when we sell them. And if they grade out where we think they're, uh, they fit in certain prices, well, that's where they go. It don't really matter if they're registered or non-registered. Very few of the people that here are buying registered bulls for registered cows. I'd say 95% of my buyers are commercial people like you like are. Like myself, with, right. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's go take a look. The red tag bulls are three quarter Angus, quarter Bramer bulls. Green tag bulls are all uh, Angus bulls. Now, what are the ages of these bulls here? Uh, these bulls are born in uh, probably end of February and March. I was kind of looking for something more in the 18 to 24 month uh, range. Do you have anything that might fit that bill? Probably right at the moment, no. The last month we've had a run on bulls. <laughs> uh, so most of our older bulls are, are pretty much gone. One thing I would say though, depending on the size of your cows, uh, these bulls are weighing 1,100 pounds. Angus bulls are bigger as breeders. And if there's a way to get it done, they'll sure enough get them cows bred. If you got some kind of giant cows, well then that's a different story, but these bulls still have a lot of growing to do. We've been telling bulls to go out to breed at this 14, 15 months of age, up to 18 months, but the last month, like I said, sold probably 30 bulls. So okay. it really kind of knocked out all those older bulls. Gotcha. Although Mark's bulls look to be in great shape and had amazing genetics to boot, Given that my cows average around 1,450 pounds each, I thought it best to hold off and try to find a little bit older bull for my remaining cows. Although I wasn't able to procure a replacement bull on this trip, I appreciated all of the information that Mark provided. In addition, Mark's son Jordan was kind enough to give me a tour of the property. As we were driving along, I noticed that they had electrified swinging poles instead of gates. This avoids having to open and close gates behind you while also preventing livestock from passing through. Clever. The only downside is they do scratch, put a little Texas pinstripe in the truck. Right. So do other things out here, mesquites and other things yes. as well. But what impressed me more were the Angus bulls that the Yanaks are raising for their December sale. These will be the two-year-old bulls that we sell and we'll have another 50 to 60 yearlings that we'll be putting in the sale. So we'll have around 100 bulls, you know, offered on that on that day. Wow. And this will be in December of this yes, year? Yes, sir. First Friday in December. One thing is for certain, the Yanax raised some good-looking Angus bulls. So I heard your dad say earlier that you guys also do some meat packing and meat processing. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I guess it would have been my great-grandpa, I think about 85 years ago. He had got into the meat business. Well, back then they sold just about anything. Feed, they bought pecans, they sold your flour, anything, you know, whatever you needed for the house, they did. Back then there wasn't no refrigeration, so he built like a 10 by 10 building and it was meat lockers. So people could come here, drop their meat off, have it frozen and then pick it up when they needed. About 10 years ago, we had bought it out, my grandpa and my dad. Yeah, harvest every Thursday. The people on the floor are my dad, my grandpa, my uncle, and then me and my brother. So it's still a family business. Do people from around this area bring their own animals? Yes, sir. 
we probably do anywhere from 10 to 20 a week. At being we have J Bar Angus, we do about 15 or 20 calves a year. We fatten up and then sell them to people to then have them processed there. So we can take care of you any way you need. How about that? At the end of the tour, I thank Jordan for showing me around and agreed to try and check out their December sale. But in the meantime, I still needed a bull to cover my cows this season. Fortunately, as I was heading home, some good friends called to let me know that they had a young bull for sale with incredible genetics. Could this be the one? You'll have to check out my next video to find out. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up below. You can also check out one of my other videos here and stay up to date by subscribing to my YouTube channel right here. Until next time, I'll see you on the ranch.